What is up, everybody? This is Debo here on Debo's Film Reviews, and this week's review will be Kelly's Heroes. Starring Clint Eastwood, Don Rickles, Harry Dean Stanton, Tell Zavallis, Carol O'Connor, and Donald Sutherland and Gavin McLeod. I gotta say, this movie had everything for, for, for 1970. Action, comedy, Catch your music in it, because from the Burning Bridges and and the Hilariously Out of Place, all for the love of sunshine, just by Hilariously Out of Place, because cause it, because it was a Hank Jr. Williams Jr. song, and it's a movie about World War II. And, it's, and in a lot of ways, you can pretty much say the movie Free Kings ripped off. Although that was the Gulf War, and I, uh, well, I've already did a video on that, so. So back to Kelly's Heroes. I gotta say, definite stand, movie, movie was a definite standout. I mean, just a star set of cast, excellent action, and a lot of hilarious moments, especially with with Donald Sutherland and Gavin McLeod as Oddball and Moriarty. And I gotta say, talking about talking about his tank crew crew was almost like a stoner brigade in a way from from eccentricities. And old and Don Rickles was just all standing out as as craft game who's who was the supply guy. Of course, got on Kelly's caper after the beginning of the movie where, he, where Kelly's interrogating a, this Nazi who rips out a gold bar and and somehow finds out, realizes that there's a whole case stash of it behind enemy lines, which which is kind of. Fitting, because this one, you could pretty much say, is technically a D-Day movie, in a way. Because that's where it kind of fits, because of, like, at the end with the French, the French town being liberated, and, uh, and I also got to point out, point out how Carol O'Connor just stood out as General Colt. I mean, I mean, General General is almost like a, a complete metaphor for Patton. Although they just couldn't use the real Pat name Pat and all, cause, cause for some sort of reason and all. But, but yeah, I gotta say that's about the third best thing you done, Carol O'Connor ever did on screen, besides being Archie Bunker and Chief Bill Gillespie. Man. He knocked that one out to park two of, for being a being a patent rep off. And of course with a badass reason of Tell Zavallis and Clint Eastwood. With names with names like Kelly and Big Joe. And of course with of Harry Dean Stanton and and a few of the lower character, level characters. I mean, because then you know the seventies when he's in it. Because old Harry Dean was definitely a very underrated actor, and an ultimate, alt, but that always stood out in anything he was in. Same with Charles Wallace as Big Joe. I mean, he just. I mean, you can say everybody in this, all the characters were perfectly cast. I mean, even when actors today, it could not be, could not be, you couldn't remake, couldn't be remade, or properly remade either. Although, although the original was perfect, and of course. Of course, the guy all had a lot of epic action, like the beginning of the movie, like the 
especially when we get to see where it's like the house and barns be blown and the Nazi who who drops the dime on the on the hidden stash of gold gets a gets plugged after and be getting drunk and all being drunk in the middle of a battle. And of course with the sound with the music of burning bridges, yep, which is definite standout and and the characters also stand out. And old back to the action. I mean just had yeah, like the between like the attempt of ambush of where it was like the M16 half tracks and the and other things that, by the air, aerial group. I mean, oof. which of course with a comedy, of course things would go wrong. And then then there was the minefield, and then and of course they were just going ambushing. Then they just had a run around with the with the Germans and all, and then. Then of course, of course, oddball Riley's more, more and more tank people try to cut more people in on the cut and all. And you obviously say there was not, obviously not that much gold to go around, and then, and then of course with when they got to the town and, ooh, and talk about. Where they were, where they had the gold, which you could say, even though the f the film was about Fr France and D Day, the movie it took was filmed in Yugoslavia. For actually, for the fact that they still had a lot of Sherman tanks still over there, because because Sherman w tanks were the World War Two thing, and the movie was made in 1970, and oof, frankly. Practically one of the best tank mo This has got to be one of the best tanker tank movies ever, ever. Cause I mean, I mean, just a lot of tank action in this movie. And 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 how mo there's the most likely that there are a lot more Tommy guns being used in this movie. Thompson's. That were used in this than they were in one Garands. And old Tom, you were back to a funny scene where it was like the old railroad station getting, Nazi railroad station getting ambushed by oddballs guys bumping, bumping the out of place Hank Jr. <laughs> I mean, oof, now that was just badass and funny right there. And of course, back to the final liberation scene where they just. Got all over the place, and then they look got it down to one Nazi who they just decided just like, eh, you get a cut. But overall, I have to give this a a definite five out of five. I mean, what more can I say? Over than how, uh, over than how everybody perfectly cast. Well, standout characters like the Oddball, General Colt, and if I had not already mentioned, but who I kind of think was a, a definite metaphor for Patton. Just because, because when they showed him in uniform, he had the Third Army patch on it, and that which was, of course, with Patton's division during the war. And, of course... Of course, with it being a metaphor for D-Day. But overall, excellent movie. I hope y'all liked. Subscribe. Enjoy the, my review as much as you enjoyed the movie. Uh, and I'm, uh, I'm signing off for this week.